Hello, everyone. I'm here today to show you my whip and chat. Actually, to show you my work in progress and do a whip and chat. So this is my orca whale. And I am about three quarters of the way done. And I'm really happy with the way it's turning out. Although, as you know, I've had some frustrations with the diamonds and with the stick. But all in all, I think that it's turning out really pretty. And I am hoping to finish this in another couple of days. So um, there are five ABs in this painting. And as you can see, I have half of the whale, a little bit more, a little bit less than half the whale to finish, some clouds up in the top the birds, a little bit more clouds in that pink area. So I'm not sure what the camera is looking at. So I hope I have it on you guys or so you can see it. But I'm going to position the camera now. So hold on. Don't get dizzy. And I'm going to get it so that you could see what I'm working on. Okay, so I think I'm going to be working on some of the area over here and filling in some spots that were left out. And then I'm going to move over to this section. So I have from here all the way across to finish. So um, anyway, I'm going to get my supplies set up. So once again, I'm going to be away from the focus here for a minute and put out my supplies because I had them covering up part of the whale. I love this little light that I got from Goodwill. It's adjustable three ways and it just works really good. It's the best desk lamp that I've had. And I got it for half off. It was $9.99 at Goodwill, and I got it for half off. The only thing is, I used it so much, I thought I might check and see where I could get a replacement LED battery, or not battery, but bulb. And I wrote the company because I can't find a replacement bulb for it. So, Hopefully, I'll get a good response. I'm turning the light. Okay, I have a uh, light pad, but I don't think I need it right now. It's Sunday afternoon, and we have plenty of light. It is 2.30 in the afternoon. Um, I have my dryer going, and the air conditioning's running, so I hope that you can hear me. And um, I'm going to get my supplies ready. Uh, let's see. What do I want to start with? Okay. So anyway, just checking in to do this whip and chat, and I don't know how it's going to go. I hope it goes okay. And um, I don't have a lot to talk about because my life is not that um interesting but it's a good thing because i don't like a lot of drama uh you know at my age i kind of like peace and quiet and um i'm a homebody so when i'm not working i work part time but when i'm not working i like to be at home and i got this at goodwill too it's a cute little cup holder kind of thing it's not real big Oh, you can still see the Goodwill sticker on it. Um, but it holds my pens and um, my my little scissors and a couple other, my tweezers. So thought I would show you that. So I am using a light blue color right now, 3755 is the DMC number. 
and I'm going to start over on this side. And I have my fat squishy that I made out of a makeup sponge, which really is working out really good. I've trained myself to use both hands because of my condition with the soreness in my fingers and wrist. So I start out using my right hand. I'm left-handed, but I start out using my right hand. And then when I get tired with that hand, I'll switch to my left until I start feeling it get sore. And then um, I just switch back and forth. Of course, my dominant hand, which is my left hand, is actually much um, easier, but I'm just thankful that I could use both. I'm going to cover up some of this undone part of the canvas because I don't want to get stuck to it. So I'm using the reverse papers. Okay. So it's been a nice day today. I didn't do my walk. I usually walk every day or almost every day, first thing in the morning. I um, love mornings and I love the fresh air in the morning before the sun gets really hot. And I have, I'm lucky, I have some really what nice walking paths in my neighborhood in my um, community where I walk around um, the interior part of the complex has uh, a big fountain with a lake and a uh, grass area and then sidewalks up near the buildings. And it's really peaceful and quiet. There's picnic tables and barbecues. And then the outer section of the community has sidewalks as well. Um, so sometimes I change my route and I do the outside and then the very outside, um, where the cars are has like dog stations to throw away their, you know, your dog bags and stuff. So, um, it's just really, really nice to walk. I, um, enjoyed it when my dog was alive too because he had nice walking paths to go and enjoy so that was a plus for my little dog he loved it so how long have you all lived where you live in the city that you live in do you move around a lot or do you mostly stay in one place? Um, I actually was born in Ohio, in Cleveland, and only lived in Cleveland the first nine years of my life. And my family decided to move us all down to Florida. Originally, we had a house that they thought that they would buy in Miami, but it fell through and they got on the phone with their friends that live down here and told them that they would like to find another place, maybe closer to the central Florida area where their friends were living. So they found a house, sent my parents a picture of it back then. It was 1969. So of course there were no cell phones, but they took a Polaroid and they sent it to my parents in the mail. And my parents said, yep, we want it. We're going to buy it. So they bought the house over the phone and moved us all down. So there are seven kids in my family. I have seven siblings. My mom actually had nine, my mom and dad, but two died at birth. So we were a big family. And we had one special needs sister who um, was severely autistic. And so um, anyway, Sight unseen, my parents took that leap of faith and moved us down to Florida. And that's basically where I've been, um, with the exception of going up north and staying with my brother and his family for a year in my senior year of high school. But I came back to Florida and um, decided that this was my home, you know, it was the place that I like the most. And I started working 
out of high school. Um, growing up with an autistic sister was quite different as far as um, like my friends and their families. Uh, my sister, her name was Dory. Uh, she recently passed away. So that's why I refer to her in past tense. But um, anyway, she was second from the youngest. So I'm right in the middle. I have two brothers older than me, one sister older than um, myself and four sisters younger. So two boys and five girls that survived birth. Um, so anyway, Dory was very difficult to manage at times. She never learned to speak and she never learned to do things on her own, like get her own food and sit down at a table and eat. Um, she had quite a destructive behavior, never hurt people, but she would throw things and smash things, you know, when she was mad and she would hurt herself. So that was, you know, at times very difficult, but it was what we knew. And, you know, we grew up knowing her and loving her and knowing that she needed special attention. And she did get a lot of special attention, um, understandably. And she did quite a few very um, unusual things that amazed us. I probably... My mom always wanted to write a book, and I told my mom that I wanted to as well if she never got around to it, but then I've never gotten around to it either. But there were some actual miracles that happened surrounding Dory and um, things that are unexplainable. Um, so one of the things was she drank a cup of bleach. She ran out to the utility room, which was not connected to the main house. It was between the garage and the house. And my mom had a cup of bleach sitting on the washer. And Dory ran as fast as she could, but she was pretty quick. And first thing she did was tip the cup and drink the bleach. So my mom didn't see her do it, do it, but knew that she had because she could smell her breath and she also noticed the cup was empty. So my mom called the paramedics. My mom didn't drive and my father worked two and three jobs our whole life growing up. So um, we didn't see my father much, but he was a big influence in my life. Anyway, my mom called the paramedics and I remember even as like, I think I was 10 or 11 years old, the ambulance pulling up in the driveway and being very scared. And they took her to the hospital and everything was perfectly okay. In fact, the doctors were scratching their head because she was perfectly fine. Um, they even questioned my mom, are you sure she drank the whole cup of bleach? And at the time, it wasn't a whole cup like we know a cup. It was probably like a quarter of an actual cup. But um, in any case, that was pretty um, scary, but at the same time, really amazing that she was okay. Another thing is we went to the ocean as we usually did when my dad would have a day off. And um, we always had to watch her because she liked to take off and run. So we had like our dress sashes tied to make like a leash. I know it sounds cruel, but actually it, it was for her safety. And we had like a long rope of sashes tied and then we tied them around her waist. And then that way, one of us could always be holding onto that. I don't want to call it a leash, but, you know, her restraint so that in case she took off running, we could, you know, managed to, to keep her from running into the ocean or running in front of, you know, traffic or anything like that, because we'd go to Daytona Beach and people drove on the beach and we could park on the beach. But anyway, somehow she managed to take the leash off without us knowing and ran straight for the ocean. And I mean, no one could catch her. We saw her running and we went, all of us went running after her, my father as well. And she just went, kept on going right into the water, 
without stopping until she disappeared. Like it was so fast. We, and my dad is a good swimmer, even though we lived in Ohio and we never really got to go swimming. My dad knew how to swim and he, he started looking for her and he was waiting for her to come up for air and she didn't. And he, he was starting to get frantic because he didn't know where she could be. And the next thing he knew, she brushed up against his legs in the water and he was able to reach down and scoop her up. Now, this was like a good five minutes and we were all, you know, on the beach looking up and down to see where she might have, you know, where she was going to come back up. And my dad, you know, pulled her up and, and got her out of the water and she was perfectly fine. And, and granted, she didn't know how to swim and we never went swimming but she knew to hold her breath and she had no water in her lungs. She was perfectly fine. And my parents who were very faithful um, told us when we were young that her guardian angel was watching after her. So we had a pretty unique childhood. Our friends liked to come over because there were so many of us kids and my mom cooked like when she made pork chops, she made like 15 pork chops. And when she made spaghetti, she made like two or three pots of spaghetti. And like when she cooked, she cooked a lot to make sure there was enough for all of us. And one of the things that I remember eating a lot besides spaghetti every Sunday was um, ground meat gravy over mashed potatoes because we didn't have a lot of money growing up. And um, so my mom was really thrifty and she knew how to stretch things out really well. So um, that was really good. We enjoyed that. and It was filling and it was a warm meal. And um, my dad was German. He had German and uh, I forget, I think just German. And my mom um, is Irish and Welsh. And um, they met when my mom was 16 and my dad was 18. And after a year, they got married. So my mom got married at 17 and my dad was 19. And they were married and had a beautiful relationship, like so good. I, you know, definitely felt loved as a child. I had a really good childhood. Um, it was chaotic, but I just feel like my parents had a lot to deal with, with Dory, and they kept her at home until she was about, I think she was around 25, and my parents were starting to get up there in age, and it was getting harder and harder for them to take care of her. So they did find a home. Well, they, the first home they found for her, they were living back in Ohio again. So my dad could finish up some years for a retirement that he had worked in a place for like 22 years. But the home that they put her in um, was abusing her. And my parents were really good about visiting her and finding out what was going on and, and being very active in, you know, everything that pertained to Dory. So they took her out of that home and eventually moved back to Florida when my dad finished up his uh, years to get a pension. And they found a home down here in central Florida where they put her. And that's where she was for a good number of years. I would say at least 20 years, maybe longer. And um, my dad in 2005 passed away in his sleep. And we don't really know if it was heart or diabetes because he, he did have a history of both. But it was a shock because we weren't expecting it. And my mom never drove. So I worked full time. So on the weekends, I would go and pick her up and take her to see Dory, which was my mom was two hours from me. And my sister Dory was another hour in the opposite direction of me. But um, we would go and visit her and bring her her favorite snacks and foods. And, you know, she really enjoyed that. She knew who we were and everything. 
but um, she kind of lived in her own world. And um, so I did that for a while. And then, you know, my mom had 19 cats. So when she started to get, you know, older and older, it was harder and harder for her to take care of all those cats. She, she and my dad were both big animal lovers and, you know, can't save everything. My dad always said you can't save them all, but if you can make a difference in some of their lives, it's important. But anyway, it got kind of out of hand and my mom needed to come live with me for a while. She had to have some surgery. So I, talked to people I worked with trying to figure out what to do. And there was a man that had a ranch and he took cats that basically needed a home. So by the grace of God, we called him and he said that as long as they're spayed and neutered, he would take them. And if we wanted to make a little donation for their upkeep, that would be great, but not, you know, not, absolutely necessary just if we could and so we had someone load them up in a van and take them up to his ranch where he took care of them and uh yeah that was I was a little bit hard on my mom but it was the best thing for her she kept one and of course when she came to my house I had birds so that was interesting but it worked out fine. And um, so between my siblings and myself, we took care of my mom up until her last days. She lived until 2017. And I miss her so much. She was so wise and she was so um, kind and so sacrificing and giving. I mean, she was like a saint to me. She just, she just was a wonderful mom. So that's kind of my childhood. Um, and then I retired from my long career at Disney. And I talked about that in another video, so I don't want to go deep in detail, but I started out as a monorail driver in 1979. And I worked in transportation at Disney. I moved to uh, the trams where the those long cars pick up people from the parking lot and take them into the ticket and transportation center and, you know, the entrance of the parks. And I did that when I was young up until maybe, I think I did that until I was 21. And I had an opportunity then to go into the office and basically be a secretary. And I didn't have any skills. I had taken a typing class in eighth grade. But of course, back in 1982, 1981, I think was actually when I went into the office. Um, you know, there were no cell phones or computers. It was all typewriters. I was really fortunate, though, to live on that edge of time where we went from typewriters to computers because I was at the right place for sure. Being at Disney, they gave us all our training for free and, um, you know, sent us to the Disney University, which is an actual true place and taught us everything we needed to know about computers. And um, so I eventually passed my typing test and they hired me as a secretary. You know, I wasn't just a temporary fill in. And then I um, moved around a lot. I worked in different places. That's the good thing about Disney. You can change departments and locations and keep your seniority because you're still a part of the Disney company. So I worked in like merchandise buyer's office and personnel. And I worked in operations at Epcot. And I opened the Epcot Park. We worked in a trailer until our building was done. Um, and then I went into the finance division and I pretty much stayed in the finance division until my last 20 years. So the first 20 years, um, I did a lot of uh, secretarial work in finance, supporting the analysts and the um, accountants and so forth. 
And then I decided that I needed a change. I wanted to move from Orlando. So I moved to South Florida where they have a Disney vacation club. And I worked at that resort until I retired. And that was in 2019 before COVID hit. So I was very blessed to be able to retire before all that happened. And um, I enjoyed retirement and I, I still would be enjoying it, except I had a job offer in a different line of work, which, as you know, probably most of you know, in a doctor's office for alternative medicine, um, homeopathics and acupuncture. And um, I didn't know if I would like it or not. And I really wasn't even sure I wanted to go back to work because I felt like, you know what? I, I worked 45 years of my life. Now I want to spend, you know, the rest of my life just enjoying time to do what I want to do and not be having to punch a clock every day or be somewhere at a certain time. And um, I did that for a few years. And it, I, I'll tell you what, it's really nice. I never got bored. I um, always stayed busy with my hobbies. I used to do a lot of acrylic painting and I even did parties where we did like girls night in and painted pictures and, you know, those, those places that you can go and have wine and, and learn how to paint using acrylics. And I got into it and I was doing that, but then it was short lived because of COVID and nobody wanted to gather in groups. So, I sold all my supplies, which I had enough supplies for 25 people at one group setting. And I actually have never gone back to acrylic painting. It just um, merged into making crafts with paper. Um, I did a lot of fall stuff and a lot of Christmas stuff, decorating door hangers and stuff like that. Um, watched some videos and learned how to make wreaths. And, you know, not a painting related type craft. And I knew about diamond painting, but not a lot. I had heard about it and I had seen a couple of the diamond paintings completed. I think on Pinterest. I'm not sure, but um, I just, I didn't feel like that was something that I wanted to do, at least not then. And I am so glad that I went ahead and I bought a diamond painting because it's so relaxing and soothing. And it reminds me a lot of painting, but without all the mess and the paints and worrying about them drying out and rinsing brushes and, you know, all the stuff that goes with painting. This is so much easier and efficient. And I get the satisfaction out of my completed diamond paintings like I did from my acrylic paintings. So I started diamond painting, let's see, in April or May of this year. I think it was the beginning of May. I actually had bought a um, Michaels small 8 by 8 parrot diamond painting and it just sat on my desk for probably a month I wanted to do it but I just wasn't ready like I would look at it and I would think oh I want to do that I don't know not this weekend maybe next weekend you know and I just put it off and put it off and then you know I I finally opened it up and started looking at it and sorting out the drills. I didn't know what I was doing because I didn't watch any videos. And um, I just kind of winged it the way that I thought it should be done, which, you know, I guess I winged it pretty good. I managed to get through it. Plus, I loved it. And I wanted to go and buy another one. Um, I don't know if I was buying from Timu yet at that point. I don't think I was. And I didn't think to look on Amazon. So I was just looking in my neighborhood store, which was Michael's, um, Make Market, which they have really, really good canvases. If you all want a quality canvas and you don't want to, you know, spend a lot of money like you would 
on some of the, you know, designer ones or, you know, artist, real artist rendered ones, you could go to Michael's or online and pick up, you know, usually you could get a 40% off coupon and you could pick up some really, really nice diamond paintings. And the canvases are really soft and really well made. And I've never had a problem with their drills at all. And they have a pretty good kit that comes with it. I mean, it's, it's one step up from the basic green boat, I would say. But check it out if you haven't. I did a couple of them. And my favorite one was a 16 by 20. And I think it's called the Lake View. And the Lake View is a true 16 by 20. So it's easy to find a frame. It's not one of those odd sizes that, you know, you have to have a custom frame or anything like that. So I did frame it in like a farmhouse taupe wood frame that I got at Walmart and um I I just love it. They have some glow in the dark ones too right now for Halloween. I saw someone show one yesterday. I was trying to think I watched a few videos yesterday and I think it was um it's coming to me in a minute I think. Uh, Liz, Liz Crafts, I think is her, um, channel. And she shows the Lake View and a double Christmas one. They're two eight by tens in one package and then a Halloween glow in the dark. So, you know, if you want to check her out, I might, if I think of it, link her channel below in my description. So I'm hoping I get through with this orca whale by Halloween. That's my goal because I have other paintings I really want to start. And I like to sometimes work on two at the same time, never three. But I've been so focused on this one. It's taken so much of my time that I just feel like the time I'm spending on a different one is holding me up from completing this one. I don't know if anyone ever feels that way. But that's just me. It's like the hour I put into another one could have been an hour that I put into this one to complete it. And I did contact Diamond Art Club this morning. Um, a couple people commented in my video from yesterday that I should let them know the difficulty that I've had with this one. And so I did. I contacted them and I just... FYI, I'm not looking for, you know, a refund or a replacement because I really love the diamond painting, but please check your other Orca paintings. This is a um, 89 by 65 centimeter. I said because the problems I'm having with it are stickiness is not good. In fact, there's a couple places where the sticky is not even there at all. And I had to do double-sided tape. And um, the other thing was, I'm going to have to put some more glue dot on here. The other thing is a lot of these drills, there's, there's so many of them, have um, the hollowness on the back side so they're not flat. I'm going to try to grab this one and show you what I mean. So, well, my glue dot, I haven't changed my glue dot in a couple days. <laughs> Believe it or not, I haven't had to refill it in probably two days, but now it's needing it. But so many of these have the little um, indents on the back. They're not flat, and it's hard for them to stay stuck to the canvas. That one is okay, but anyway, um, it makes it really hard, especially if you're trying to multi-place because um, then I have to go and I have to push down each and every diamond that I multi-placed. And as it is, I have to push down the ones on either side sometimes when I'm pushing down one in the middle because they pop up. Oh, here's my blue dot. So 
what I do with my glue dots now, I stab myself with the tweezers. What I do with the glue dots is, um, yeah, I'm going to put my tweezers point side down. That might be a good idea. I just take the tiniest, I take my sharp, sharp scissors, and I just take the tiniest, tiniest little piece off this micro dot of a glue dot. I find that the smaller, the better, the longer it lasts. And then I just take the tip of my single placer and pick it up off the scissors. And then I squish it in, which it's so tiny, it's not like any of it comes out over the side. It just um, fits really nice into the point. And then I press down on some paper. I have a cardboard right here to make sure that there's none sticking up. And if there is, sometimes I rub it on my clothes to make it um, less sticky because it is sticky and my canvas is not sticky. So I don't want to have my pen stickier than the canvas. And so, um, Anyway, so that's the glue dots really, really work well for me, especially on the single placer. I have tried it on the multi placer, but you got to get it spread out really even and make sure you cover the whole. Um, I'm in a spot where there's no glue. A little tiny bit of glue, so I'm going to force it. Um, yeah, so for the multi-placer, if you use a glue dot, it's a little tricky to get it completely across even so that when you're picking up the diamonds, you don't have a gap and you're missing one. And uh, that could be a challenge because it's not like putty or wax where you can really smooth it out and spread it out. Glue dots don't spread as easy as the wax. So anyway, live and learn. I tried it. Um, but I really do like the glue dots because like I said, I can go days with just loading my pen one time. And uh, the trick though is smaller is better. The least amount that you put in your pen the longer it'll last and it won't pull out onto your canvas or onto your uh, drill. I have a friend at work who makes beeswax candles and she made me some beeswax in like a little tin to use to try with my diamonds and it kind of works, but I think some of the other waxes work better. Have any of you ever tried beeswax? And if you have, what was your experience with that? Because maybe I'm not doing it right. Maybe it, maybe it does work. I told her that the glue dots are working better for me. So, you know, I didn't give her a reason why I didn't want any more, but, um, yeah, I was just curious if anybody used beeswax. As for my storage of my canvases, you know, I use the A3 binders that have the protective cover sheets that you could put one on each side. But I tried keeping a journal, you know, a paper uh, composition book. And putting, you know, like a sticker of the picture and, and filling it out. But it just seemed like more work than the app. So, you know, some people like the app. Some people like the, the actual notebook. Um, but if you're interested and you haven't heard about the app that you can log all your paintings in, as well as putting all the information you want about it, including pictures. You can have like a, a main picture and then there's another part of the app within that canvas that you're logging to put more pictures 
and you could put like pictures of the progress or just after it's done, um, different angles and different, you know, pictures. Most of mine, I just put one picture, but there are some that I've put multiple pictures in. So it allows you to select different options. So if you are giving it away, you can say gifted and it puts all the gifted ones in one section when it organizes it all into the app. If you kept it, all the ones you kept are going to be organized in that file. And if you sold it, it asks questions. Um, it's like a template. How much did you sell it for? And, you know, just a lot of information about it. So I really like it. And I at first only was logging the ones that I completed. I thought I wouldn't have a use to log ones that I didn't complete yet. But one day I was thinking about it and I thought, why not? You know, because they're in a separate file. So I went in and I logged every single one of my stash. And I didn't put all the description in, like how much it cost or where I got it from. But I did put a picture of it and I did put the number of colors and the size. And um, there's a note section. So if you want to add a note, so some of them I have added a note to, just a reminder note for myself. But um, it's really a cool thing. It's called Gems Flow. It's G E M S F L O W. And it's in the App Store. And it's super easy to use. Um, I'm not a big apps person, but I did find it fairly easy to really more than fairly, but really easy to use. It's very self explanatory. And um, it's easy to pull it up and look at your paintings. And um, if you wanted to show somebody some of your paintings, like you're, you know, out visiting relatives and, you know, you just want to show them off a little bit. <laughs> but I have now a total with the ones that I've completed and I've completed 16. So I don't work real fast, uh, obviously. But I have 77 now total paintings logged into my GEMS app. So, yeah, that's going to take me a while to do. But one thing I do want to do, and I reached 300 subscribers. And that is, I know I talked about it. I haven't done anything about it. But I want to have a, a goodie giveaway box. So I'm at 313 subscribers. When I reach 500, I am going to do a goodie box. And I'm going to do a really cool goodie box. I'm going to have a lot of stuff in it. So keep an eye out for that video when the time comes, when I get close to 500. And, um, I'll give instructions on how to play, and I look forward to doing that in the near future, or however long it takes for me to get another, like, 187 more people. But um, I just appreciate everyone that comes and watches and leaves a comment you know, or shares my video. I, I do appreciate it. I'm, I do it for fun. So it's not something where, you know, I really mind if I, I get a lot or not. It's just, it's really more of a fun thing for me. And, um, it makes me happy. I like sharing and, um, all that. So. I'm still working on this cloud up here, this area. And I'm hoping before the end of the day, well, it's already 3.15. And I've been on here 44 minutes. Wow. So, um, and I know this is really boring. I That's why I don't do whipping chats. But, I, and I wanted to like plan out some things that I was going to talk about and say. But when I sat down to think about it, it was like, I don't even know what I would say. I, 
you know, I, honestly, I, I guess it's just not something that you plan out too much. You just go with the flow. But um, I hope everybody is able to work on their diamond paintings this weekend. And um, I hope that you all are getting ready to finish some of your fall paintings. I have not started on my fall one yet. I have it under some heavy objects flattening out. And I do every day I think about starting it. But this orca whale just is not allowing me. I think I'll be really glad when I get it finished because it's just constantly weighing on my mind. And it's almost like I'm obsessed with it. Like I can't do anything else until I finish it. And once I finish it, it's going to go in this frame. You can't really see it. But this is a frame with a plexiglass um, front. So it'll go behind it. And then I'm going to place it on my wall right between my two recliner chairs where I have this big painting um, that I'm looking forward to donating because I want something fresh and new. And I really, really am um, wanting to get more of the ocean, like nautical type theming going in my living room. So this will be a big start in that direction. And most of the ones I've done, I have framed and I have hung or I've given as gifts framed. I've only got a couple that I've put in my um, portfolio. But as I finish more, I definitely will be placing them in my portfolio. Okay, so here's an example of, it's not going to focus of a bad drill. It's got a big indent and a lot of them are like that. And I was picking them out, but then I was afraid I wouldn't have enough drills. So I'm just using them anyway. And I know that there's a warranty on these, but honestly, I'm going to seal it because I don't want to take the chance. It won't even stick to the canvas. I don't want to take the chance that the drills start falling out, even though there's plexiglass that's going to be over it. I don't know if that's honestly going to be able to hold them in. I don't know how close the canvas is going to be to that plexiglass. And um, I have this little rolling pin that I've been rolling over my drills. And every day that I roll, I hear more popping. And I know I've pushed in every single one. But they still pop. They're just, um, they're poppers. And I can hear them popping now. So definitely going to seal this. And only because of the condition of the drills. Otherwise, I wouldn't seal it. And I'm going to use the Timu sealer because I've used that on all my paintings. And it does not take away the shine, at least not one bit that I can tell. So it's for diamond paintings, and I think it does a really fantastic job. Well, that's all I'm going to talk about today. And you're probably glad, but I hope that you've enjoyed my whip and chat. I hope you're diamond painting, doing all the things that you love. And I hope you have a blessed week, and I hope that you all stay well. And I'll see you in my next video. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.